Hi there, Ocean Leaders. Welcome back to another episode of Speak Up for Blue TV, where you get the great latest, greatest, and not so greatest ocean news happening around the world today, and you get my take on it. My name is Andrew Lewin, founder of SpeakUpForBlue.com, a website dedicated to building ocean leaders through awareness, education, and action. Welcome to the show today. We've got a very special, positive ocean story happening that's, that's blown up around the internet, including Ellen, the TV personality, has actually brought up. Captain Dave Anderson on her show to tell him to tell her the story about how his whale watching company, his team of the whale watching company, helped free a juvenile gray whale that was entangled in a fishing net off the coast of Southern California. The group spent over eight hours trying to free the large whale from the net. And as they were taking the net off its fluke, which is the whale, the tail of a whale, uh, they found a sea lion, a shark, some squid, and some fish that had already died in the entangled net. Now this story is so cool, it was videotaped, the whole event was videotaped, so check out these clips, I think this is a really cool story that you need to see for yourself. Check out this clip of, of what happened and how they freed the net, or how they freed the whale from the net. Check it out. Now this is perfect. This line's not coming off of No, you can't see me. There's the shark. She's logged out. This is the best it's been. I'd say we just go up and start fetching her. She's got it. You on? Yeah, I'm on. Nice on. Nice on. So I want to bring this story to your attention for two reasons. One, these people spent eight hours trying to free the whale. On top of the eight hours, the group spent the num a number of hours the night before trying to attach a lighted buoy on the fluke of the whale so that they can keep an eye on it overnight and resume working on the whale and taking the net off the whale the next morning. And even at one point, they lost the lighted buoy during the night and they had to shut their engines off, try and listen for the whale to reattach the, the buoy in the middle of the night. And they actually did it miraculously. I don't know how they did it and even they don't even know how to do it. But the point is, the team spent two days trying to free this whale because they felt they had to help this whale. It was their duty, you know, true ocean leaders at heart. And that is the point I wanted to make. The second point I wanted to make was that the leader of the team, Captain Dave Anderson, who also owns the whale watching company, makes his living taking, out, taking people out to watch whales. And I think this is an important point that this person thought, took it upon himself to actually save this whale because he thought that he had to do it. Because I often hear people talk about whale watching companies as a negative thing. You know, whale watchers sometimes are known to be too aggressive towards the whales and get too close. And they bring their clients close and their customers close because they want to make the experience the best possible, you know, best possible experience for the money. However, during that experience, they actually hurt the whales or they stress the whales out and they don't come back or, you know, it just it looks bad. The clients get, you know, pissed and they don't want to come back. But this story seems to be the complete opposite and the, because it's caring for the oceans. And you know, you don't hear this often about whale watching companies. Now I'm sure that there are many whale watching companies who are actually too aggressive and actually harm the whales. But as more stories like these actually come to the forefront of the media, I'm hoping that it might change the view of the whale watching industry for those whale watching companies that actually you know, spend time and care about the ocean, just like, you know, Dave, Captain Dave Anderson's company. So Captain Dave Anderson and his team are true ocean leaders, which is what Speak Up for the Blue is striving to build. And they're ocean leaders because they not only sacrificed their time and their effort to, to free this whale from the net, but they actually felt that it was their duty to do so. So to you, Captain Dave, and your team, thank you. Thank you very much for being a true inspiration to striving ocean leaders like myself and like the ocean leaders that are watching this episode right now. Now I leave you with this question of the day and it's about the whale watching industry. How do you view the whale watching, the whale watching industry? Do you think it's too aggressive or do you think it's actually a good ecotourism industry? Let me know in the comments below. Of course there's links to the, the actual article on speakupforblue.com in the description below. And if you want to see more of our episodes, you can, you can click on the annotation above to subscribe to our channel, or you can click on the annotation below to just view our channel and everything we've ever done, ever, that we, you know, for a lifetime on the YouTube channel, which has only been a few months anyway. That is the story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Until next time, my name is Andrew Lewin, founder speaker for Blue.com. Happy conservation.